tough questions, new insights, diverse perspectives. Welcome to Questions of the Day with Fanuel Muindi. I want to learn more about your organization. Yeah. Ciencia e tu manos. Tell me about it. So, Ciencia e tu manos is, an, is a non-profit organization. Um, I started this a couple of years ago, uh, 2020. It was initially what we actually became a non-profit. What we do is science communication. Um, we communicate science in the Nisi language. It's targeted to our Hispanics, so it's all in Spanish. So all we do is we communicate science, interesting topics. We create we create a professional development um, talks, and we create opportunities for students to join us. So it's a combination of things because like, when you look at our at our audience, right, we have young professionals we have professionals that are actually more advanced in their careers but we also have just general public that's interested in science that they like to understand the why and the how of things and we just explain those and in, in, in through social media and we also visit schools and we do science fair with students we are basically taking care of the communities in stem basically doing what they basically just kind of moving along with them through their careers, communicating science in an easy language, making it interesting from them, for them, and we do it in Spanish because people need to relate, right? And there's a lot of students as they come in that they don't necessarily manage English as well, and we don't want that to become a barrier for them early on. So we bring the science in Spanish, and we actually encourage them the, the need to actually learn English to develop a career in science but we don't create that barrier early on. So that's what we do and, and that's what we stand for. So that's amazing. And so tell me more about how the organization started. Like, what was so that genesis? The genesis is interesting because it was, there was a controversy with vaccines and autism that was back in the days for, before COVID for sure. <laughs> And it was also controversies with GMOs and a lot of people. And I just said, like, we need to inform people and we need to put out there what's known. And usually you hear a lot of things that are not necessarily based on an actual science knowledge. And we said, we, we can provide that. And at the time, we were actually students, grad students. And I have a couple of friends that were interested in it. And it was like, okay, let's start something in which actually we communicate in a language that people can understand. And that's, that's how we started. And eventually it just keep developing, right? And, and there was, as we gained more, uh, more attention, we started to session and say, hey, we can do more to bring people in. How do we train students? How do we actually become part of the, of the, of the development of those students, right? right. So right. that's what we actually did. And that's how we actually progressed. Um, eventually, we actually had a program which actually have three uh, magazines that are published right now in our in our in our in our website. That we create a program to train students early on since they're in hats in high school to understand scientific literature and transform that into just uh, language easier language in, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so as we become more and more um, engaged in actually the science communication, we became more engaged. How do we train people so they can actually create sustainability with, with this uh, type of approach of science communication? I want to talk about um, where your organization fits in the current ecosystem here in Puerto Rico, San Juan specifically, I guess, yeah. um, around science engagement. How? How do you fit in into that picture in the ecosystem? Who are you collaborating with? Who do you want to collaborate with? Totally. So, so we collaborate a lot with Ciencia Puerto Rico, which is which is, our, I think, the, the the primary nonprofit organization for science in Puerto Rico. Okay. We collaborate a lot with them. I participated with a lot of programs with them, and actually, my organization was in in, in many ways inspired by them, right? And and so I collaborate a lot with them. I think we fit very well because we the way we do science communication is very unique and that the way we communicate the way we create content it fits very really well because I think people relate to us right and and that's that's how been very helpful for us and also we have a lot of people that kind of come like the faces of the organization because they are always there and they are very relatable because they're just people like the so you just look like the audience 
you just keep, you you could have been the audience five years ago, right? And now you're trying to be that inspiration. And I think that's it becomes highly relevant for us, and it helps us engage pretty well with students. Like we get emails from students and 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 inbox from students all the time, and they ask for us to like I have this question, I have I want to do this, how do I approach this? And we connect them with 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 people, and we we move that forward. And I think. That's how we fit. Uh, we collaborate with uh, with uh, with other institutions too that do stuff for for students. Like recently, we we kind of uh, amplify a lot of different programs for a lot of different people in the island. Right? For example, there is one from the Puerto Rican Science Trust that is targeted students like very early in their careers, like not not even careers, just very early at their lives. And they create programs for them and all that. We amplify those things and we try to collaborate as much as possible. So in Puerto Rico, I think there's an infrastructure of science communication that is growing. I see ourselves as one of the main ones regarding creating engaging content, right? So was, online. Online, so exactly yeah. online. Which is something that also fits pretty well because we take really good care of the online things and, and the science and the social media and all that. Ciencia Puerto Rico actually is a really great organization that takes also the online aspect, but they are actually out there at the community. So, so your organization is growing, yeah. right? You were telling me offline earlier. And so there'll be lots of news that we want to capture and yeah. you're always welcome to come by the, the channel. Impact. You've heard this word before. It's a very interesting one. How do you think about impact? And you've shared a little bit these stories of students that have come through being impacted, right? What metrics or metric do you like not worry about? Really think a lot yeah. for your organization. So, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of things that, to that question, right? One is there's a lot of things the numbers can measure, and there's a lot of things the numbers can't, right? right? And and that's my philosophy with my board, and that's what when we look at this, we keep track of insights, we keep track of, of all the information that you get through social media on how your posts are being engaging and all that. I mean, last month, for example, we had a really, really good month. We reached over 400,000 accounts, which is a really good number for us as an as a, as a, as a institution that is actually based in Puerto Rico, targeting Puerto Rican audience mainly for now. So that for us worked pretty well. The other thing that we measure is how we follow stories. So we follow our students, so see how they are doing, and we keep track of those things. That's the other thing we, we do. And also behavior of, uh, of we do a lot of uh, through the pandemic was one of the main things we were doing a lot of science communication and regarding oh when to get tested when to do that and we created this timeline of if you get exposed this day how do you measure that what to do when right we we saw that that timeline in all major news we saw that if you walk into a, into a laboratory there's a clinical laboratory you will walk in and they will have the timeline like here in puerto rico, here in puerto rico. yeah and they will have our timeline just put in the walls so people can actually follow so those ways are ways are also a measurement of impact right because people are actually changing their behavior incorporating the science that we're trying to communicate into their daily lives right so for sure insights we do manage that we follow the stories and we actually look around and see how the content that we're creating actually is impacting people's behavior wow, wow. professor thank you so much oh, appreciate it <laughs> appreciate it